Technology and education is bogus. Now don't get me wrong, I love technology, I love education, I teach music for a living and I feel very fortunate to be able to do that. But there's a lot of conversation around technology within the education system that I find myself disagreeing with. Now, backing it up a little bit, I've always been really into computers, really into technology uh, since a pretty young age. I used to be involved in a lot of communities as a child, online communities uh, that focused on hacking Blizzard games, uh, more specifically hacking Diablo 2, uh, setting up bots, setting up map hacks, that sort of thing. And so I've always kind of like carried a desire with me that maybe goes hand in hand with my desire to educate but to incorporate technology into the classroom. Uh, this desire was really multiplied when I was doing my student teaching and my master teacher at the time was really into a program called Smart Music, which is like an online music learning tool, helps facilitate independent uh, rehearsal. It's a, it's a pretty cool tool. So check it out if you don't know what I'm talking about. And near the end of my student teaching experience, I was exposed to a new thing at the time called Google Classroom, which has become pretty ubiquitous recently uh, within the education community. And so when I got to my current teaching site, this was, I think, 2015, 2016, I was ready to bring a lot of my love for technology into my classroom to kind of augment the traditional music learning environment. And the following year, 16, 17, a colleague of mine teaches visual art he and I were able to pilot Google Classroom at our school learning site. It was a lot of fun. It was such a new technology at the time. I, I really felt like we were on the precipice of something great in the, or in the education community. Um, that would continue for a couple years into my master's. And I decided to get my master's degree in 2018, close to that, um, in... Uh, Master of Science in Education with an emphasis in digital learning. And during my literature reviews and during my coursework and implementing some of the strategies we were talking about during that program into my classroom, I really started to question the efficacy of incorporating technology into school, into education. Uh, and then most recently, once everything locked down because of COVID, everyone was thrust into that world and we had a really good experiment in education in technology and we found that for the most students it's not scalable distance learning failed most students and i choose those words intentionally i don't think students failed during distance learning i think distance learning failed our students and for this video that leads me to my next point I think there's a difference between learning and education, and that's a larger conversation that I intend to have later, maybe another video. Um, but suffice it for this conversation to differentiate between the two. And so I'm talking about education specifically as an institution. Uh, I don't think that technology has an impact on a student's intrinsic desire to learn. I think every student has a desire to learn. Every person has a desire to learn, something that motivates them internally. But education, almost by definition, is an extrinsic motivator. And so technology won't fix that. And I've sat in on countless classes taught by pretty talented teachers who were really into technology, who had you know, their digital whiteboards, they had Kahoot, they had these online interactive lessons, everything set up to the nines, they were delivering it great. And in the classroom were tables of disinterested high school students, disinterested teenagers, um, some on their phone, some falling asleep, some sitting there not really paying attention. And that's when it hit me that technology won't change that. That's not something that technology can fix. Technology is a tool, just like any other tool in the classroom, whether it's your overhead projector, whether it's a whiteboard, whether it's, you know, for me, like a metronome or my instruments that I can demo. These are just tools to facilitate learning. They're not a cure-all for disinterested students. And 
If we know this about technology, we have to ask ourselves, is what I'm doing or what I'm bringing into my classroom going to make my students better musicians, better mathematicians, better writers, better historians, better thinkers, whatever your subject is? And if the answer to that is no, then we have to stop doing it. Our whole reason for being is to make our students or to facilitate our students to become better at skill X. For me, that's musician. And what I've come to realize after doing like recording assignments and online discussion board assignments and listening assignments and essays and all this stuff and, and using YouTube and using Google Music or Deezer or all these like online tools, it wasn't making my musicians better at music. In fact, it was having the opposite effect. It was artificially lowering their grades because many of them weren't doing it. And it took me a while to realize that that's not their fault. I was developing a skill in them that was maybe tangentially related to music, but wasn't at the core of music learning. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized that many times teachers use technology in their classroom to make their jobs easier, not to motivate or engage their students. And I think Google Classroom and the whole Google Education Suite is actually a really good example of this. Most of the tools on that aren't meant to engage students. They're meant to facilitate the teaching process. They're meant to make the job of the teacher easier. When you turn in an essay on Google Classroom, that doesn't help you become more engaged as the person writing the essay. It allows, it, it allows the teacher to have an easier time collecting that, to grade them, to send them back with feedback, to provide marks, to keep a grade book. All of that is logistical in nature, right? All of that is meant to make my job easier as a teacher, not to make your job easier as a student. And if we all understand that, if we understand that it's to make the job of the teacher easier, not necessarily to focus in on the student, why do we continue to do that? Why do we always feel the need to vote in measures to increase budgets to get class sets of iPads or class sets of Chromebooks or subscriptions to all of these online services that we hope make our students higher achievers or we hope make our students more engaged in the classroom or facilitate learning to some degree. And I think that's because school funding is directly tied to the government purse, right? We, we get our money from attendance. It comes from the state, it comes from the federal government or a combination of both. And I think most businesses understand that. And they know that schools have budgets, but those budgets are kind of superficial. Because when we ask, as schools, when we ask for more money from, you know, the populace, we tend to get it. And we tend to, to use that money to either um, increase teachers' pay or to buy into more fashionable teaching methods, right? This constant wheel turning of, of trying to change the paradigm in education. And right now, the paradigm in education is more technology. And so a company like Apple... There's no real reason why students, for most of the work that they do in a classroom, need an iPad or need a MacBook. Most work students end up doing are accessing a web browser um, or using it as a word processor. And so Apple, in this example, understands that if they can provide discounts to schools, if they can push initiatives that stress the importance of education or technology and education, they know that students end up at a pretty young age with an iPad or a MacBook in their hand and that they've got a customer for life. And so I think there's other things affecting this push toward technology and education that aren't student-centered and that aren't learning-centered. And that's part of the reason why I was making this video. Most educational tools require pretty modest hardware. You know, a five-year-old Dell running Linux can do most of the things that you need to do in education. Uh, so the takeaway, I want to keep this video kind of short. Takeaway is if you're a teacher, ask yourself that question. Is what I'm about to use or what I'm about to do going to make my students better at skill X? 
The answer is no. Don't do it. If you're a student, ask yourself, is my teacher using this program to engage me more? Or is my teacher using this program to make their job easier? And if the answer to that is the former, you, are, you do feel like you're being engaged more, find out what it is about that technology that's engaging you and do more of it. That's a great thing. If the answer is they're doing this because they wanna make their job easier, start asking yourself why that is and who stands to profit from it. In general, just be wary of anyone trying to say that technology X or program Y is going to fix your problem. Because chances are, like in anything else, in education, the answer to that is probably no. And so you should have a pretty keen awareness. You should be pretty wary of the solution that they're selling you. At the end of it, education comes down to the individual and their motivation to learn something.